the neurological examination of the lower limbs. Nice to meet you. I'd like to examine your legs and, and we're going to begin then by seeing uh, what your walking is like. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind just hopping out of bed please and just stand up by the edge of the bed. Do you feel steady? If the patient is able okay. to walk, start by so examining walk the gait. The legs need to be uncovered. Use this opportunity to make a general inspection. Thank you. Stop right there. Turn around and just, just come back towards the bed again. Okay, stop there. What I'd like you to do now is to walk with your uh, heel to... Heel to toe walking is a test of cerebellar function. Look for unsteadiness and any leaning to one side. Is the gait typical of any particular abnormality? What I'd like you to do now is to stand on your toes and to take a few steps. An S1 lesion makes this oh, difficult. That's good. Thanks. And now just on your heels and take a few more steps. An L4 or L5 lesion will make this difficult. Alright, just come this way. You can turn around. And what I'd like you to do now is to, um, uh, is, is to squat like this. A proximal muscle weakness will make this difficult. Okay. Now test station. Stand close enough to the patient to steady him or her if necessary. Even, even your feet completely together like that. Good. And your hands straight out like that with the palms up. Now I'll be close in case you, uh, in case you become unsteady. Slight I'll... swaying is normal, but marked unsteadiness when the eyes are open suggests cerebellar or vestibular disease. Romberg sign is positive if unsteadiness increases markedly when the eyes are closed. It is a sign of proprioceptive loss. All right, that's very good. All right, open your eyes, and if you wouldn't mind just hopping back in the bed. And... Now ask the patient to lie down. Keep the legs exposed. Look for muscle abnormalities and fasciculations and tremor. Test tone at the knees and ankles. I'd like you to stay just very loose so I can roll your leg and, flop, and be loose and floppy. That's good. There should be little muscle resistance to these movements if the patient is relaxed. And, and stay loose for me. Very good. Next test for clonus of the ankle and knee. This is a sustained rhythmical again. contraction of the muscles when put under sudden stretch. It is due to an increased muscle tone. Patella clonus is tested next. Now test power. Start with like hip flexion. Is lift this leg straight up in the air. Push hard against me. Push hard. That's it. Good. And this leg. Push hard up. Good. Then hip extension. Now I'd like you to drive your leg back into the bed. Push down hard. Okay. And again, push down hard. Now hip abduction. Push your legs apart as firmly as you can. That's it. Good. Now hip adduction. Again, push pull your legs together. Good. Now test knee flexion. I'd like you to bend your knees for me. Bring them both up. Good. Now hold it in that position and don't let me straighten it. Hold it. Good. And this one. Hold it in that position. Good. Now test knee extension. Now straighten your leg for me. Push out. Kick out. That's it. Kick this leg out. Good. You can straighten your legs again. Down. Now test the ankle joint. Plantar flexion. 
What I'd like you to do now is to press your foot down against my hand and your toe as well. Curl your toe down. Good. Push this foot down, toes as well, toe, the, that toe as well. Push down hard. Dorsiflexion. Now I'd like you to bring this foot up towards, or toes up towards your face, foot and toes. Good. And this one, toes and foot. Now test the tarsal joint. Eversion. What I'd like Inversion. you to do now is to, is to put your feet out, away from each other like that. That's it. Keep it in that position. Uh, push out. Good. Now put your feet in so that they face each other. More like that. Relax a bit. More like that, so that they're facing each other. That's it. Hold it there. And hold it there. Now test the lower limb reflexes. Begin with the knee jerks. Okay. Well, I'd like you to, to be relaxed again, and let me just take the full weight of your leg. Right, Normally, stay. contraction of the quadriceps causes extension of the knee. Compare the two sides. If the knee jerk appears to be absent on one or both sides, it should be tested again using a reinforcement maneuver. All right, stay right there. The ankle jerk is tested next. Relax your leg. Keep it loose. The normal response is plantar flexion of the foot with contraction of the gastrocnemius muscle. Again test with reinforcement if necessary. This reflex can also be tested with the patient kneeling. What I'd like you to do is sit up for me and you'll have to kneel on the edge of the bed with your ankles hanging over the, over the back and straighten yourself up. Are you okay yeah, like that? All right, just hold that position. Now test the plantar reflexes. Richard, this can be a bit uncomfortable. I'm gonna be scraping the bottom of your foot. Stroke up the lateral aspect of the sole and curve inwards before the key reaches the toes, moving towards the middle metatarsophalangeal joint. The normal response is flexion of the big toe at the MTP joint. Okay, thank you. Coordination is tested next. Start with the heel shin test. What I'd like you to do is put this heel on that knee. Yep, and now go up and down the crest of your shin. All right, thank you. And we'll in patients with cerebellar disease, the heel wobbles and oscillates from side to side. Now perform the toe finger test. Look for intention tremor. Reach up with your toe to try to touch my finger. Just hold it that position. That's good, thanks. And try it with this side. That's good, thank you. Now perform the foot tapping test. Look for loss of rhythmicity. Can you tap um, my hand with your foot? Just tap it quickly if you can. That is good. Now try this side. Okay. Now test the sensory system. As for the upper limb, test for pinprick sensation first in each dermatome, comparing the right with the left side. Map out any abnormality and decide on the pattern of loss. What I have here is a, is a neuro tip. It's, um, it's a blunted pin. It, it should still feel sharp, but it won't break the skin. And I'm just going to demonstrate here. Does that feel sharp? Yes. And on this side? Okay. I'd like you to now to close your eyes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch your legs in different places and you just tell me if you feel it and if it is sharp. Check the other leg. Sure. 
Then test vibration sense over the ankles and, if necessary, on the knees and the anterior superior iliac spines. What I want to do, I've got a tuning fork, of course. Do you feel that? Yes. Yeah, and what is it? Okay. And on this side? That's vibrating. All right. Close your eyes again for me, please. Do you feel that? Yes, it's vibrating. And tell me when it stops. It stopped. Okay. Do you feel that? It's vibrating. It stopped. Okay. Next, test proprioception using the big toes and, if necessary, the knees and hips. What I'm going to do now is I've got your toe, that's pulling it down, and that's pulling it up, but with your, and I'll do it on both sides, but with your eyes shut, I'd like you to tell me which direction I've put, pushed your toe. Down, down, up, 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 down. Okay, thank you. Finally, test light touch with your eyes shut again. So tell me when you feel this. Now sit the patient up and look at the back for scars or deformity that might indicate a spinal injury. I'd like you just to sit up for me, please. Okay, and I'm also going to just pull your shirt up. Okay. Okay. If a lower back injury or lesion is suspected, examine sensation in the saddle region and around the buttocks and anus.